because sometimes there are voids in our hearts, in our life. And no matter what the earth has to offer, it cannot fill that void. Only Jesus can fill that void. And I really feel like some of you listening right now, there is like a void in your heart and, and nothing can fill that except Jesus. And Jesus is a gentleman. He's not just going to like budge in into your heart and just feel it. He's going to come and he's going to feel and he's going to heal. But he's going to do it when, when you invite him. And also, so, so right now, I, I just feel like before we, we finish worship that I just feel that I want, I want to do this like just ask, ask the Lord to just come and feel me. Feel me till I'm overflow. Feel me till like there's no void. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Yeah, more Lord. Let's just close our eyes and just let, let God feel right now. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, thank you, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. More, Lord. Father, I, I just bless right now that those who need an infilling of your love receive it right now. I just pray for more. I just pray for your fresh love to just flow and feel at every crevice or any parts that, 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 that needs healing right now. Just feel them right now. Yeah, more, Lord. Yeah, more, Lord. More, Lord. Holy Spirit, more. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, just Father. We just thank you. I just pray that as even as you continue to serve, it's like your presence just going to continue to fill people's heart. You know, I, I just I just pray that that even as we begin to speak, you know, people's mindset is going to start to shift. The lies are going to be exposed. Lies are going to be broken, and truth is going to come. So we will welcome the Prince of Peace, the Person of Truth, to, to just come right now. Yeah, more Lord. More Lord. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. More Lord. Yeah, Amen. 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 All right, all right, man. That 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 was such a sweet time of worship, you know. And and I'm just so thankful and grateful that we have an amazing worship team, you know, that 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 works behind the scenes to set up that you know really make effort to 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 make sure the sound you know so so we're, we're very excited uh we are and blessed to have have them all right <laughs> yes yes so please show some appreciation to our worship team and our sound man and i'll send them some uh love and and thumbs up all right all right send them some love and thumbs up you know, but if you want to send some for Patrick, send the laughing one. <laughs> so he will know we can differentiate. You know, if there's not a laugh, laughter thing, then people know, wow, Pastor Patrick very popular, you know. A lot of people love your gym bay play. It was so serenading. Right, Patrick, do you have anything to say? Uh, Jeff is the anointing of laughter so he can have the laughing laughing uh, uh, emoticon you can send me the crying emoticon <laughs> hey no <laughs> la <laughs> <laughs> all right all right yes i mean we we, we, we kind of joke you know uh before in our own group that you know uh jeff loves to make people laugh patrick loves to make people cry and i happen to make kids cry <laughs> but in the right context and in a good way all right, but but we, we really appreciate uh, the worship team for just leading us into such uh, such amazing presence week after week. No, you, you you make kids laugh and cry. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's so nice of you, Patrick. Amen. See, wow, Patrick, I see a lot of laughing now. Wow, they really love you. Wow, lots of laughter popping up, popping up. You know, more than oh, got crying now. You see, you see people ask they do the crying now. 
<laughs> but hey, all right. I mean, that, that's a great thing about a Facebook Live. We can make it uh, interactive. We can make it, you know, uh, spontaneous. So uh, thank you so much for being so sporting and just really encouraging um, our worship team. All right, I'm still saying more. You know, Patrick, do you feel encouraged? Okay, let's go. Later, you must preach a storm, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, hey, uh, if, uh, welcome to Circle Bridge Church. We are gonna. Uh, uh, we have just finished our worship. If just uh, if you just kind of uh, tune in online, you know, uh, we 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 have a, a great word and message to share and to bless and encourage you. So right now we are in this series called From Dreams to Destiny, and I think if I'm not wrong, this is probably like the maybe like a fifth session that, that we are going through. So this will be the last session. We have something very exciting uh, coming up for you all next month. So there'll be a new sermon series, but today will actually be the last day for our uh, sermon series called From Dream to Destiny. And we've been really discussing about like how, you know, when God calls you, when God puts a dream, when there's a prophetic word doing release, how do you carry that into, you know, into fruits, you know? into the promised land you know there are many words we can use for that you know but before we start you know i, I want to leave i want to start with a thought you know because we, we we need to know the the prophetic word the dreams that you have that is a journey you know and and a lot of times one thing we don't focus on is that in that journey we are also being transformed in that journey we are also being matured you know something happened to us as we continue to journey with god you know uh, and, and, and I think the key question is, is, as we are being transformed, actually our perspective change. All right, we need to know as we mature, our perspective change. And one of the key questions we need to ask ourselves, you know, is this, are we maturing as we, co- as we continue the journey with Him? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, are we becoming more like Him? <laughs> because we become the one we worship. So if we worship Jesus, we 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 was we we supposed to become more and more like him, amen, amen, man. That that that. <laughs> All right, there there are people that's making me laugh when I'm preaching. So I'm so sorry I'm laughing, but hey, this is life. I'm gonna be very real that someone is making me laugh, but I need to focus. All right, but you see, you see one one thing I realize is a lot of times a lot of people when they got saved, they have this misconception that the gospel is about blessing, it's about provision. You know, like, oh, you know, if you believe Jesus, you, want, you, you will go to heaven, you know? I, I, I'm not discounting those. You know, uh, th- those are part of the package. But, but we need to know the gospel, one of the core things about the gospel is actually about life transformation. You know, when you are transformed into maturity, your definition of blessing and provision will change. Amen. I'm going to say it one time. When you are transformed into maturity, your definition of blessing and provision will change. And it's no longer, the gospel no longer become like, Lord, bless me. Lord, give me this. Lord, I need this. But rather like, wow, Lord, use me. Lord, let heaven come to earth through me. Lord, have your way through me. And you see, there is a difference of maturity in terms of perspective. And that perspective can only be, be, be changed when we mature, when we continue to journey, when we continue to worship Him, because we become the one we worship. We become the one we hang out with. Amen? So, today for the concluding sermon series from Dream to Destiny, you know, I really want to uh, talk about um, the carrying your dreams to, to, to labor. You know? So, in, in the prophetic culture, we, we, we have this language uh, that, that some of you uh, might, might know. You know, that, that, that this thing which is called that when, when, when God speaks a destiny or when God speaks a prophetic word over you, you are pregnant with His promises. All right? So, so, so this is like a, a, a prophetic language in, a, in some of these uh, prophetic circles. And, and we, of course, we need to know, you know, only women get pregnant in the natural, but in the spirit, when, when God speaks something, when God deposits something, we all get pregnant with His promises, with His destiny. So, so, we, so now the thing is this, I, I believe all of you who are watching, God has spoken something, either through a dreams, through a vision, to you directly through an encounter, or maybe God spoke to you something through a prophet, through a prophetic word, you know? Or maybe when you read, read the Bible, when you watch something, 
you know, and, and God spoke to you. And I'm saying that when you receive, you know, uh, last week I talked about like the, like the seed. When you receive that, when you believe in that word, you're actually impregnated with God's promises. And it is so important in, that in this journey, we, we, we need to take care of the baby. All right, so, so tonight I'm going to talk with a reference and an analogy of when someone is pregnant. All right. You know, so, so like you, we all know, you know, when women get pregnant, you know, we, with a baby, they become a mom, you know, and there's a baby inside. And there are things we, we need to take note to ensure actually a smooth pregnancy and a smooth delivery. Amen. All right. So there are, I, uh, uh, apparently I have a four point sermon today. <laughs> I got four points. All right. So number one, when we are pregnant with God's promises, one of the main things we need to take note of is nutrition, diet and cravings. All right, nutrition, diet, and cravings. That's my point number one. All right, you need to know that when, when, when a mom feeds, what a mom feeds herself with, it will impact the growth of the baby. If, if the moms are taking a lot of healthy food, you know, it, the, the baby will receive the nutrition. But if the mom's going to, you know, uh, eat like junk food, processed food, they will have, the baby will receive less nutrition. But, but if the, the sorry? Become a junkie, yes, yes. Don't, don't eat junk food, you become a junkie, you know? But, but or, or maybe even the, the mom, when they start to drink alcohol, you know, it, it actually affects the health of the baby. So we, we need to know what a mom's drink or eat affect the fetus, affect the baby. And I'm going to say this, what you are feeding yourself with will affect the dreams that God put inside of you. Amen? All right. And, and, and my question tonight is this, what are you feeding yourself with? Are you feeding yourself with social media, conspiracy theories, or, or whatever you see, you know, like, like, or the latest gossip, latest trend, latest fashion, you know, like, like come on, I'm going to be honest, like, if you are stuck on Facebook for six hours a day watching videos or Instagram watching video, that's not going to get you into your promised land or your destiny, unless maybe you're called to be a media influencer, okay, then, then maybe there's some connection to it. All right, so, so we need to know one of the things that we, we, we need to feed ourselves on is actually the Word of God. Are you feeding yourself with the Word of God? Because the Word of God is not just for your information, it is actually for your transformation. And, and when you are impregnated with God's promises, when you're carrying your dreams, we need to keep feeding God's Word. We need to feed ourselves with truth. Amen? And, and let's, let's look at Hebrews chapter 5, verse 13. You know, he said this, for, for everyone uh, who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food uh, belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen? So, so okay, now that's, we need to know, if, as our Christian word, that, that, you know, uh, the, the, the writer of Hebrew, you know, most people think it's Paul, you know, is talking about <laughs> that, like, like there is a difference from drinking milk and drinking solid food. You, it, like look, the baby drinking milk that is very highly nutrition. All right, and that's easy because the baby hasn't have any teeth. But when, when the baby become a toddler, we got to introduce solid food. You know, and as you mature and journey with Christ, you, you, you got to know, you got to stop drinking milk, you got to start eating solid food. And, and look, as you journey and as you walk into your destiny, you need to change your diet. You need to change your diet, you know? You, you, you can't just read, you can't read what you think is convenient, you need to go deeper into His Word, you need to read what is necessary for edification and, and breakthrough. Amen? All right, I mean, John, John 6, 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life, come every day to me and you'll never be hungry. Believe in me and you'll never be thirsty. Come on, your main diet when you are carrying the dream of God, must be your communion with Jesus. He is the bread of life. He is the everlasting water that will never make you thirst. You've got to spend time with Jesus. You've got to eat and drink from Him because you will become like Him. When you, the more you feast, the more you drink, the more you spend time with Him. Are, are we spending time with Him? Or are we spending time with something else? You know? And, and, and what, one, of, one of the things I realize is um, people who are pregnant, they have cravings random and uh, untimely cravings. I, I know some of my friends, you know, when they're pregnant, you know, at like 2 midnight, 
they will say, like, I have cravings for durians. I need durians. Where is my durian? Patrick, where is my durian? You know? So, so, but, so like, they have cravings, random cravings. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this. We, we, we are not just supposed to hunger and thirst for Jesus. We need to crave for Him as well. Amen. We need to have random craving. Like, man, I, I just want more of Jesus. Just that random moment in your day, maybe when, when you are maybe mopping the floor, just like, man, I, I'm just have this craving for Jesus. I'm just going to go spend time with Him. You know, fulfill your craving of Jesus. Amen. All right. I, I'm, so that is point number one, nutrition, diet, and craving. I'm going to go to my point number two for tonight. Point number two is community. Community. All right. Who you surround yourself with. So do you, you need to realize this. Um, when a, when a woman uh, is pregnant, they will usually surround themselves with people who are also pregnant with about the same uh, term. You know, maybe you're seven months pregnant, your friends might be maybe eight months or six months. You know, they, it's near you. So they can relate to one another and they can support one another. You know, because they are sharing experiences. Oh, you feel your baby kicking? I also feel my baby kicking. Oh, you have this sickness? I also have this morning sickness. And, and, and like you have someone to relate to, you have experience to glean from. So, so community is the second part that we, we, we need to, to really um, have, you know, when we're in this journey to get into our destiny. All right. But because in a community, you either influence people or you be influenced. Right, I'm going to say it one time. When in a community, we either influence someone or we are the one being influenced. So there are two key groups in, a com in, a, in every community. There's an influencer, someone who has more experience, someone who has charisma, someone who has things to share, or the one who is here to learn or, or to here to, 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 to mingle around, they, they are the one who will be being influenced. All right? And the key thing is this. Before you can become the influencer, you actually need to be influenced by someone or something first. You can't just be an influencer overnight. You need to be influenced by an event or something or someone. All right? But there, there must be something that sparks you first. All right? You become who you surround yourself with. You need to know this. Uh, research has shown we are the sum of the people we hang out with. You know? If I always hang out with... Uh, People that love Jesus, guess what? The love of Jesus is contagious. I will fall in love with Jesus more too. Amen? If, if I hang out with people that, 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 that's not hungry for the gospel, I, I, I can start to take a very laid-back approach to, towards my faith. So I, I, I need to really like look for people who are as hungry as me or the best who are even more hungry than me. Amen? So, so you need to know when, when we the community... These people that you choose to hang out with, their personality, their traits, the words they speak, they will rub off naturally on you. You see, I want to hang out with people that will encourage me. They will tell me, Clement, you can do it. Can you imagine you go to a group of people and they say that, Clement, your, your dream kind of sucks, man. I don't think you can reach your dream. I mean, this is probably a very toxic and unhealthy kind of group of friends that I, I, I wouldn't want to be. You know, I want to be in a group where people can champion my dreams and my calling. You know, I, I love to say this. If you want to fly like the eagles, you cannot hang around with the chicken. Chickens don't fly. You could hang around with people who have experience, you know, who, who can help you, you know, who can journey with you. All right. If you fly with the eagles, you will end up in your destiny. If you hang out with the chicken, you may end up as KFC. You must end up, end up at dinner's table or what? All right. I mean, man, I, I'm, I'm fond of hanging out with the eagles, you know? So, so in community, you know, you need to find people who have more experience than you. Or you need to find people who have accomplished similar dreams like yours. All right? So, so, so then this will be a very healthy community and tribe you can run with. Amen? All right. I, I'm going to go to my point number three. All right, my point number three is protecting your dreams protecting your dreams all right okay so so like you see every pregnant woman is very careful about their movement because every movement they make they are taking in my life i have a baby in front of me right now i'm carrying an extra weight right now you know so so i have to be very careful because i need to protect my baby you know so the same things when when god puts a dream one of your job is to protect the dream you know 
And, and one way to protect your dream is this. Do not abort your dream or do not have a premature delivery of your dream. Come on, do not abort your dream. Do not have a premature delivery of your dream. If God said He would do it, He will fulfill it. Amen? You see, don't settle anything less than His best. Don't settle anything less than His best. You see, Abraham was given the, the promise that there will be a son, there will be an offspring. Instead of waiting for the promises, instead of trusting for the promise, what did he do? He made a self-fulfilled prophecy happen. He fulfilled the prophecy by, 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 by making what he thinks works and Ishmael was born. Abraham has Ishmael because he did not wait for God's promises. He self-fulfilled it. Well, we do not want to self-fulfill our dreams. We want to partner with God to see our dreams fulfilled. We need to know this. Uh, God cannot lie. Numbers 23, 19. It says God does not tell lies. All right. So I'll put this way. God don't lie. He cannot do it because He is truth. He is the person of truth. Everything He said is, is not, it cannot be a lie. There, there's no room for a lie. It's all a truth. You see, when we understand how simple and profound this attribute of God is, it has very significant impact in our walk with Him. What, what do you mean? Obviously, can you imagine with me? All right, God cannot lie, so whatever He, he spoke is true. All right, so, so which means this. When He speaks, remember, when, when He created, when creation happened, you know, He spoke, He spoke, all right? And what happened? When He spoke, the power of His voice was released and creation responded to the power and something happened. Let that be light and light just happened. Do you see the significance? That there was an element of He speaking and things happening because He cannot lie. When, that, when He said, let there be light, there must be light. Come on. When, when God said that you are going to nations, God is not lying. It's going to happen. You see, when God speaks a destiny over you, this is what I believe, when God speaks a destiny over you, the spiritual realm starts to shift and align for you to step into it. Come on, that's good news. When God say that, you know, I've called you to the nation. I call you to be an evangelist. I call you to be a pastor. I call you to, to, to have influence in, as an educator. I've called you to be an engineer to create new stuff. When God speak all this destiny and calling, the spiritual realm actually start to shift and it start to align. And, and, and whether you believe or not, it's, it's really shifting. But when you start to believe, more things start to shift. All right, so, so, so some, some of you might, must ask, but, oh, but I've been waiting and waiting and waiting 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, nothing's happening. All right, so there are three reasons why things don't happen, okay? Number one, maybe it's not from God, which means maybe you hear from God wrongly. I mean, I do hear from God wrongly sometimes. Sometimes we make mistakes when we're hearing, hearing His voice. If we hear wrongly, it means it's not a word of the Lord, which means it's not a truth. And the truth cannot be established when it's being spoken out. Or maybe you receive a wrong prophetic word. People also do make mistakes. Maybe someone give you a wrong prophetic word. Can you imagine you have a word to be a pastor, you have a word to be an evangelist, you have a word to be an a, a apostle, you have a word to be a prophet, and you also have a word to be a teacher. So which is the right word? You cannot be all, it, it, it fulfill all the five folds. You're confused. You know? So, so, so one of the reasons why prophetic word or prophetic destiny did not come to pass is maybe it's not from God. You got it wrong or people give it wrong. All right. And number two, maybe it's the wrong timing. It's the correct word, but it's not the right season. It's not the right timing. You just have to wait patiently for it. All right. Or number three, you know, number three is most people who, who could, 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 might, might, feel, might feel more unsent to it because I, I, I have, I'm guilty of number three. We didn't do anything with it. See, when God spoke something, you need to do something with it. You cannot sit there and expect God to do everything. Amen? Let's, let's, let's look at David. David a very has a very interesting story. David has no royal background. He was just a shepherd boy. You know? And, and when, when Prophet Samuel came to look for the next king of Israel, you know, and, and, and he asked, asked Jesse to line up all his sons. I mean, David's dad did not even put him in a lineup. You know? He, he actually forgot about David. 
all right? But, but you need to know, when men forget about you, when your parents forget about you, when your leaders forget about you, guess what? God did not forget about you. Amen? God will not forget about you and the calling that's on your life. All right, so the interesting thing is this, when, when, when David was, was being um, anointed as king, you know, scholars believe he's probably at an age between like 13 to 17 years old. All right, he is about uh, around that age, you know. But the interesting thing is this, he was only king at about 30 years old. Man, that is a long, long, long time to wait. That's a long, long time to be pregnant with God's promises. All right, uh, on an average, it's about at least like maybe 15 years. He's carrying this calling, this dream that he's going to be a king, but he don't see the fruits of it, but he believes in it. All right, but you see, what, what I learned from David in his journey to become king is this. As long as God has chosen you, it doesn't matter how many people bypass you. As long as God has chosen you, it does not matter how many people believe in you. Because I want to let you know tonight that God believes in you. When you, when you start to realize that God believes in you and you start to really like meditate on that man, the creator of the universe, my heavenly father, the almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, he's the one that believes in me. Something in you start to think, start to shift. Something in you start to like, like light up. Man, he believes in you. He believes you're ready. He believes that you are more than good enough. He believes that you're stepped into your calling. So, look, when you, believe, when you know that God believes in you, you will stop looking for man's approval. You will stop looking for, for man's validation because you know God already, already approved you, God already validates you, and God already believes in you. Start believing that God really believes in you. Come on. God's purpose always prevails. So no matter what's happened, the calling of God will always prevail. You just need to keep moving on. You just need to keep believing. Amen? All right, I'm going to go to my last point uh, for, for tonight. All right, and the last point is celebrating other people's dream. Celebrating other people's dream. You see, when, when, when people, uh, when, when, when all these mummies are pregnant, when they see their friend deliver the baby first, they rejoice. It's like, wow, congratulations. You know, your pregnancy is over. And right now, instead of carrying the baby, right now you carry the baby in your arms. They, they celebrate. They rejoice. You know, and, and this is when we need to learn how to celebrate people's dream. Amen. Uh, I'll, see, I'll, I'll ask this question. When you see people have their dreams fulfilled, you know, what is your emotion? Do you feel joy? Do you want to celebrate with them? Are you happy? Or do you feel like sad? Do you feel like, God, why not me? Why not me? Why this person? Why that person? What is the emotion that's going through in, 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 in you? We, we have to learn to celebrate people's dream. And, and this is something that, that we need to grow in as a body of Christ. We need to celebrate other people. Because if we don't celebrate people's dream, you know, being fulfilled, what we're doing is actually comparing. And comparison look like this, like, God, why did that person only take two years to start an orphanage? I took five years and my orphanage haven't started yet. You know, there are many factors to, to look at why people get into their destiny first or their dreams fulfilled first. You know, we're not here to self-diagnose what went wrong, but I will tell you two keys that will get you faster into your calling is these two keys. Surrender and obedience. Surrender and obedience. The quicker you surrender your own agenda and obey His instructions, the quicker you will get into your promised land. Amen. Come on. The quicker you surrender your own agenda and obey His instructions, the quicker you will get into your promised land. All right. You see, the Israelite makes some mistake along the way and it causes them to wander even longer. Come on, we, we don't want to be wondering and wondering. We want to wonder, wonder no more. We want to step. We want acceleration. We want the grace of God on our life. We want, to, we want our life to glorify Jesus. We want our life to change the world. Amen? So, so don't compare. I, 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 
I mean, I, I, I understand. I have those feelings before and experienced those before. Like, like and, and it's dangerous, you know. That, that in the past, I've compared like, God, why you choose that person? God, why, why did that, the, the, the testimony or the miracle happen through this person and not me? I compare. Why did that person step into this calling that I want? And, and it's, it's, it's not healthy. It's dangerous. And it make me introspection. I, I start to ask myself, God, am I not good enough? God, what did I do wrong? Did I make you angry? You know, like it sucks your faith. And, and instead of putting your eyes onto Jesus, you start to put your eyes on, on, onto the problems, on, onto, onto what you start with. You see, we want to focus on what God is doing. Amen. We want to focus on what God is doing and not what He's not doing. It's so easy that in our journey with God, in our journey to, to our, our promised land, to our destiny, to our calling, we love to focus what He's not doing. Oh, God has not blessed me financially. God has not given uh, me that breakthrough in my career. God has not sent me uh, my spouse. God has not done this. God has not done that. We are always focusing on what God has not done. Why not focus on what God has done? Wow, God has given you a new job. God has given uh, you, you uh, um, a, 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 a new house. God has given you new friends, new community. Like focus on what is happening in your life instead of what is not happening in your life. All right, I'm going to end off with this story. All right, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. It's about the five loaves and two fish. All right, you see, when we celebrate, we are partnering with Thanksgiving. All right, and we know this, Thanksgiving increased the kingdom. Thanksgiving increased the ki kingdom. All right, so I'm going to read Matthew chapter 14, verse 19. All right, he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass and he took the five loaves and the two fish. So, so he took the five loaves and two fish. And let's read carefully, you know, word by word, what, what did Jesus do? He took the five loaves, he took the two fish. And the first thing he did was, he looked up to heaven. He blessed, he broke, and he gave to the disciple and the disciple the multitude. So the first thing is, when he got the, the, the loaf and the fish, the first thing, he looked to heaven. Why did he look to heaven? I like to propose this. See, heaven is a place of abundance, not of lack. Jesus is not going to focus on what God is not doing yet. He's not focusing, oh God, why do I only have five loaves? Oh God, why do I only have two fish? God, look at all this material. He's not complaining. He's not despising what's in his hands. Instead, with the five and two fish in hands, he actually looked up to heaven because he wants a heavenly perspective of his situation. He wants to see how God sees. He wants to see what heaven is going to do because heaven always has heavenly solution. Heaven always is a place of abundance. It's not a place of lack. All right, so Jesus didn't complain. He didn't despise. So we shouldn't complain and despise what God has placed inside our hands. You know? He was not focusing on the lack. He was focusing on the abundance. So stop focusing on what he's not doing. Start focusing on what he's going to do. Because God is good and he has great things coming up. Amen. And, and so he looked up to heaven. He blessed. Okay. The, the word blessed in Greek is something called like eulogy. All right. And, and, and one of the meanings is called celebrate with praises. Celebrate with praises. I, I'm, I'm, I'm saying this. When, when Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and he started to celebrate with praises and miracles start to happen. Multiplication start to happen. So I'm going to end off tonight by challenging you, by having a charge. Are you celebrating with praises with what God has placed in your hands? Even though it's just five loaves and two fish, are you celebrating with praises? Are you giving thanks? Don't despise it. Celebrate it. Give thanks. Expect miracle. Expect multiplication because God is good and God wants to see you fulfilled. I would say God really believes in you. I, I, I don't know. I really want to that. God really believes in you. He believes in your dream. And he who begins a good work shall bring it to completion. He who sowed the seed, he who speak over that destiny and calling over you, will he not bring it to completion? Amen. So I'm going to pray right now. Father, we just thank you. Uh, for everyone who's watching this right now, I just pray, you know, that, that like what I, I share, that they will protect their dreams. They will feed themselves with the right nutrition, right food. They will find the right community. And most important, they will learn to celebrate. They will celebrate with praises. I, I, I pray for, for the grace and the breakthrough upon all of their dreams right now in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Amen. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. I, I, I hope you, you are encouraged and blessed. Uh, this is my uh, contribution and my part for the last uh, episode of our sermon series called From Dream to Destiny. I'm going to pass uh, the time to uh, Pastor Patrick. You know, I, I'm sure Pastor Patrick, you know, is going to take up a notch because just now I've got a lot of emoji to encourage him. He's going to blow it up. <laughs> You know? Yeah, he will release. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So yeah, Pastor Jeff said he's gonna release something powerful tonight. <laughs> you know, a torrent of fresh stuff. A torrent of powerful uh, impartation. Alright, so uh, without further ado, I, I don't want to take Patrick's time. I'm gonna uh, let let the let the camera zoom into his radiant face. Man. Amen. Alright, Patrick, take it over. <laughs> Alright, alright, praise the Lord. Uh thank you, Clement. Father God, we thank you that you are always good. And Lord, we ask, oh God, that you come and, and just impregnate us with your vision. Impregnate the wombs of our hearts, the wombs of our souls with your dreams. Your, your dreams of destiny. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you would just come and fill us up on the inside. Awaken our hearts, Lord. Awaken our hearts to to your great calling upon our lives. Lord, we thank you so much. Lord, we thank you so much. Lord, we thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, um, like what um, uh, Clement said just now, you know, uh, in the pursuit of our dreams, are we birthing forth an Ishmael or are we birthing forth an Isaac? Are we birthing forth God's dreams, God's way? And it, it, is, it is so tough because many times we want to do it our own way. Um, David was, David was anointed as king or rather he was anointed by Samuel uh, to be king when, when he was a teenager. You know, that, that's 1 Samuel chapter 16. You know, uh, Samuel goes to Jesse and, Je- and says to Jesse, Jesse, bring, bring to me all your sons. And uh, Jesse's sons was, were all in front of, 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 of Samuel, all in front of Samuel except David because David was somewhere out in the hills uh, shepherding sheep and Samuel went went to uh, went, went to Jesse's son one by one no the first the first one nope this is not it God says no this is not it yeah Hampson as he is this is not it. Tall as he is, this is not it. Second one, no, this is not it. Third one, this is not it. Fourth one, this is not it. Fifth one, this is not it. And none of the sons was it. And, and, and Samuel said, do, do you have any more sons? Jesse called, uh, you know, summoned it. David. David came and, and God told Samuel, this is it. And the Bible said that when Samuel poured his horn of oil over this David's head, as, as the oil came pouring down, the Spirit of God came upon him that day. When he was just a young teenager, the Spirit of God came upon him that day. That, that pouring of oil is a signifying that he is anointed one day to be king. Now, praise the Lord, David was a lot wiser than Joseph the dreamer. Yeah, Joseph the dreamer, when he, he started have those dreams of greatness from God, he started proclaiming, oh, you know, I had this dream. You know, I see the, 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 the sun and the moon and the stars bowing to me. David was prudent and, and he, he didn't boast about what happened. What, what happened that day remained in his family 
and he, he was not boasting to anyone. He was summoned to, uh, he was, he was summoned to, to the palace as a teenager because Saul was, was demonized and he was, uh, Saul was harassed by, by, by a demon spirit, by an unclean spirit. And, 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 and David would play his, play his harp and the demon would leave. David never ever talked about his 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 uh his his experience with Samuel to Saul. Many things happened, you know. Uh, Saul defeated Goliath. Saul, uh, sorry, uh, David defeated Goliath. Uh, and 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 Saul started to take David out for battle and lo and behold David was a, became a mighty warrior in battle and and the people began to sing you no know, Saul slays his thousands and David his ten thousands and Saul got jealous Saul got upset because he saw that David had more favor among the people than him. One day when David was playing the harp in his presence, he threw his spear. David has to, had to run for his life. And, and, and from being in the palace, David became a fugitive. From, from being a general in, in, in Saul's army, David became a criminal and for for years he had to hide from Saul because Saul was was pursuing him as a criminal in first Samuel uh, in first Samuel chapter 24 you know uh, one day when Saul returned from from fighting the Philistines and and the spies told him, you know, oh, David is in the wilderness of En Gedi. Straight away, he took 3,000 men with him. And, and, and he, 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 he went to, to the wilderness where, where David was. He went to the wilderness. There was a cave. And, and Saul had to go to the toilet. It says that... Um, that 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 Saul need, needed to meet his needs. That meant he needed to go to the toilet. All right. <laughs> so, so he he went he went to the cave to do his business. But lo and behold, the Bible says that actually David and his men were hiding there. They were you know, that that they, <laughs> David and his men were were hiding in the cave. And, and while, while Saul was doing his business, it says that David was, came right behind Saul, saw Saul, took, took his, 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 his blade and, and cut off a piece of his robe. David's men were all telling David, hey, Saul is here. He, this is the man who, wanted, who, who wants to kill you. The Lord has delivered him in your hands. What did David say? David said, I will not touch the Lord's anointed. I will not touch, the, the, I will not touch who the Lord has chosen. <laughs> the, the Lord's anointed you know what in 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 Hebrew it it literally is it, uh is saying uh, is Yahweh's Messiah. That's anointed. There is the word Messiah. Yeah, I would not touch Yahweh's Messiah. He 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 saw the office on Saul. And and he said, I I, I cannot touch Saul. 
and and the men are going crazy. Why? Why? He is right in front of you. The Lord has delivered him in your hands. You see, David is anointed king. Samuel has prophesied to David that he will be king. And this is a perfect chance for David to, to, to fulfill his destiny. If, if, if Saul dies, and th then David can be king. But it says that David's heart was troubled because he has cut Saul's rule. And he waited for Saul to go out of the cave. And when Saul went out of the cave, then he, David also went out of the cave and he said, My Lord, the king. Saul turned around to, to him and David bowed to the earth and said, why do you listen to the words of men who say, indeed, David seeks your harm? Look, this day your eyes have seen, the Lord has delivered you today into my hand in the cave. Someone urged me to kill you, but my eyes spared you, and I say I will not stretch out my hand against my Lord, for he is the Lord's anointed. He goes on to say, Moreover, my father, see, yes, see the corner of your robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the corner of your robe and did not kill you. Know and see that there's neither evil or rebellion in my hand. I have not sinned against you, yet you hunt my life to take it. And when David said all these words, Saul trembled and said, is this your voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept and said, David, you are more righteous than I. You have rewarded me with good. I've rewarded you with evil. You have shown well with me. And, and at that moment, Saul was, was so grieved. And, and in verse 20, he says, in verse 20, he says, And now I, I know indeed that you shall surely be king. The kingdom of Israel shall be established in my hand. Therefore swear to me by the Lord that you will not cut off my descendants after me, that you will not destroy my name after my father's house. And David swore. You think that after that, you know, Saul will wake up and he will realize that, you know, David has, has a righteous heart and, and Saul would stop, stop hunting David down. No. After a season, Saul's heart hardened again. In chapter 26, you know, after, that is after... Prophet Samuel dies. Again, Saul hears news of where David is. Uh, and, and, and it says that Saul arose, went to the wilderness of, of Ziph, brought another 3,000 men to seek David out. And, and David was again staying in the wilderness. And, and Saul camped in the, the hills. David stayed in the wilderness. And, and, and in the middle of the night, when Saul was sleeping, David came into Saul's camp. And while Saul was sleeping, David took away Saul's spear and his jug, his water bottle. David went over to the other side, the other, to the other hill, 
And from a distance, David called Saul. And, and Saul recognized David's voice. And again, Saul said in, in verse uh, 17 of uh, chapter 26, Is that your voice, my son David? David said, That is my voice, my Lord, O King. Why have my Lord pursued his servant? What have I done? What evil is in my hand? Therefore, please let my Lord the King hear the words of his servant. If the Lord has stirred you against me, let him accept an offering. But if it is the children of men, let them be cursed before the Lord. For he has, they have driven me out of this day from sharing in the inheritance of the Lord, saying, Go serve other gods. So do not let my blood fall to the earth before the face of the Lord. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea as when one hunts in the mountains. And verse 21, Saul says, I have sinned. Return my, my son David. He's saying, I have sinned. Saul said, I have sinned. My son, come back with me. Come back with me to the palace. For I will harm you no more. Because my life was precious in your eyes this day, indeed I have played the fool and erred exceedingly. And, and, he, and here's, here's David's response. He, David said, here, here is the king's spear. Let one of your men come, come and get it. May the Lord repay every man for righteousness and faithfulness for the Lord delivered you into my hand but I will not stretch my hand against the Lord's anointed and indeed as your life was valued this day in my hands so let my life be valued in the eyes of the Lord and let me deliver me out of all tribulation and and and, and so so David said I, I'll not go back with you yeah Here's your spear. I return it to you. And so it happens twice, two times. Saul sends and uh, Saul pursues David with an army of three thousand, and both times the Lord delivers uh, Saul into David's hand. But David refuses to harm Saul because David recognizes the calling on Saul's life. Now, practically, if he kills Saul, he becomes king. That is how he can fulfill his destiny. But no, he will not do it. And that is one. That is one of uh, yeah in the Bible. That is one of the clearest picture of of how how a man of God walks with integrity. Now, David had many failings. He had many other failures in his life. But in this area, he passed the test. Not once, but twice. That he, did, he, he, was, he was not so eager to fulfill his destiny that he birthed forth an Ish, Ishmael. But he decided to do things God's way. They, Saul continue hunting David down, and David had to flee to the Philistines to 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 seek refuge with the Philistines. By chapter thirty, David was was with the Philistines. He, he, was, he, he was part of the forces of the Philistines. But, but every time the Philistines fought against Israel, he will excuse himself. So he will not, he will not fight with the Philistines against Israel, but he will fight with the Philistines against other, uh, other 
other countries and other tribes. But in chapter 30, In chapter 30, David and his men, they, they went out for battle. They were fighting against uh, th- th- this, this, this uh, people in, in Ziklag. And, and um, David was coming back, David and his men were coming back from a battle victorious. And as they came, they, they came back, uh, they, they, as they came back to, to their camp in Ziklag, they realized the Amalekites have, have burned down Yeah, the Amalekites have 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 burned down their camp and 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 plundered their camp and taken away all the children and and, and women. Uh, David's two wives were taken away. And all and David's men were tired and they were bitter. Verse 4, David and the people who were with them lifted up their voices and wept until they have no power left to weep. And verse 6, Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved. Every man for his sons and his daughters but David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. So here's the situation. You know, uh, David, uh, David, his men are all worn out from battle. Comes back uh, and, and, and sees their town on fire. Everything was everything was uh, in, in fire. And 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 and, and that children, their, their, their wives, their women were all captured. David's men were angry, were upset, were saying, let's stone David. Let, let's kill him. You know, he has led us, uh, he, has, he has led us into this tragedy. And here in verse 6, when he was so distressed, it says that David strengthened himself in the Lord. And here's the turnaround. Because when he when he when he began to strengthen himself in the Lord, then God began to speak to him and and, and he, he began to ask he began to ask the priest, okay, let let's ask ask God to speak and and the Lord says, Go and pursue uh, go and pursue the people who have, have plundered you and kidnapped your your women and children. They they pursued that the Amalekites, they hunted them down. They, they got back everything. Uh, all the children, all, all the women, and all the spoils. And in, in, second, Chamo, uh, in second Samuel chapter 1, when, when, uh, when after they had this victory, then, then the news came. That Samuel, uh, not Samuel, that Saul, and his son was was killed by the Philistines in battle. And so it was. Uh, so this was the time when, when uh, David was thirty. He was thirty years old. He did not immediately immediately become king, of whole of Israel. He be he he. Uh, he reigned as 
as king in Judah. Ju- the, only the tribe of Judah uh, recognized him as king. The other 11 tribes did not recognize him f- f- as king for another seven years. But so at the age of 30, he became king over Judah. It took another seven years for the other 11 tribes to, to recognize uh, uh, David's kingship and, and, and to turn to him. And it's this whole process, this whole process of being, being hunted down as a fugitive, as a criminal by the spiritual father that he respected, by, by the father figure he respected. All right? Maybe not spiritual father, but Saul was a father figure to him. And Saul was his father-in-law. And, and he, would, he would not fight back because he loved Saul and he honored the office on, 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 on Saul's life. And and here's the irony of fulfilling our destiny. The irony of fulfilling our destiny is before we can fulfill that dream that God has given us, we have to feel, we have to first see that dream die in our hearts. That in Genesis chapter 22, you know, God, God told Abraham, Abraham, you know, um, take, take Isaac, your only son, the one you love, and, and s- sacrifice him to me in the Mount of Moriah. That in, in this whole journey from dream to destiny, that there, there, there is this place where we have to we have to allow our, our dreams to die in the desert so that God can bring it back once again to life. When, when David was, was at Ziklag and his two wives were taken away and his, his, uh, his, his, his man was talking about stoning him. He was at his lowest point where his loved ones are taken away and, 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 his, and his army wants to kill him. He was at the lowest point. Don't talk about becoming king of Israel. He has lost everything. But from that lowest point, it, what, it also became his turning point. That when he strengthened himself in the Lord, everything flipped. And within a matter of three days, in fact, it, 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 in, it, within a matter of a week, everything changed. And, 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 and he, was, he was promoted to to be king of Judah. And today you may be at your lowest point. And perhaps many of the dreams that God has given you have died. And you don't know what to do. You have no more hope. And you have no more strength. You have no more strength to carry on. Everyone is against you. You've lost everything that was that is precious to you. But just like David, you know, this is the time where it's time to to strengthen us ourselves in the Lord.
to allow him to breathe life into our dead dreams to cause things at that our lowest point that can be a turning point so father god i ask of god that you will just move in our hearts lord that at our, our lowest point many of us who are at our lowest point lord lord we have lost all hope and lost all strength lord we ask that you come and strengthen us lord as we strengthen ourselves in you as we set our hearts on you as we allow you to turn things around Lord, we thank you. That you are the one who make dead dreams come alive. So, Lord, we place our hearts and our hopes in you. In Jesus' name, Amen. And the time to Jeff. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So sad, made me want to cry. <laughs> but that's really true, isn't it? Like, um, uh, this is really true. Because um, you you know what? What if what if David don't see? It is just that it's not Saul has his turn. Now it's my turn. But Saul has been king. And then uh, uh, it, it's easier to see as two different positions uh, rather than to see as a succession. And uh, sometimes I think that's necessary. What if David, just a talk, what if David doesn't think that he's going to succeed, he's just going to be king and he's going to do things differently? Uh, just, just a talk, just a talk. Uh, but this thing, this is very interesting because um, y- y- you know what? Um, all our life, um, uh, it all boils down to the point where we need to understand the root issue, why we strive so much and we struggle so much, and why Moses... Now, you, you see, Moses could have killed an uh, Israelite and nothing would have happened because the class system was just different. He just killed the wrong person who is an Egyptian, and then... Of course, you know Egypt and they have sand, then if you kind of hide the body on the sand, then tomorrow, <laughs> then you see part of the body sticking out. I mean, sand shift. <laughs> and and, and uh, you, you see, like for Moses, for Abraham, the, the, the father of many nations, Moses' case was he is a deliverer by nature. And somehow the way the... Uh, that, that's the nature of who he is because God called him to be a deliverer and for some reason he just want to do it his way not God's way and God's call doing it your way uh, is not going to end up doing anything good and, and, and that's the problem sometimes we, we try to fulfill things in our way or we look at another person's calling or we look at where the other person is and, uh, and it, it seems like the grass is always greener on the other side. But it all boils down to this. Exodus, uh, in, in the Ten Commandments there, uh, if, if you look at the last two, the, the last two are the ones that actually talk about the neighbor. Yeah, talk about the neighbor. So in the last two commandments, uh, it, it talks about, uh, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. And the last one is, you shall not covered your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's servants or donkeys or anything else. And so, in summary, you shall not bear false testimony against your neighbor. Then the last one is you shall not cover anything of your neighbor. So in the last two commandments, there's something that has to do with me in relationship with other people. Me, how I see myself and how I see other people and how I see the things that I have uh, and things that I don't have and what another person has. Uh, in summary, you see, if you look at all the other nine uh, from the Ten Commandments, one to nine, uh, basically you can actually tell. You can love the Lord your God. You can see somehow, sometimes, how a person loves God. Or you can, like, thou shalt not have any other idols. Right? Those, those are very obvious. 
those are things that if I look at you and, and I say, wait, there's an idol in your house, and then that's wrong. And so, and, and murder, yeah, commit adultery. That's, that's things that is very visible, but it all comes back to number 10, which is something that is not very visible because you shall not cover your neighbor's house. You shall not cover. Now, cover is something that we don't see at all. Like, uh, let's, for example, if I... I am if I so if I have a lousy Samsung phone and um I and 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 when I look at I, I look at uh Clement's phone Clement is an iPhone, but and and in my mind in my thought and in my mind I was covering that phone, but somehow you can't see me covering you can't see me because it's a in an inner lie that is building up into something that becomes an action. Then after when a when, when, uh, when it becomes an action, I took that thing or I somehow in uh, unrighteous means get that thing, then if someone found out, it becomes a transgression. So there are three stages. There is a thought that becomes sin, then it becomes sin, then it becomes a transgression. Yeah? And somehow in, 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 in number 10, it says you shall not cover. It, it, and, and you know what? For 430 years, when, you know, like, these two laws actually set them free. Uh, uh, they are rejoicing at these two laws because like when you are in Egypt, when someone, when an Egyptian comes and says, I want your wife, eventually they can rape your wife, they can take your children, they can send it to the fires for, 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 to, to sacrifice to their God. That's why you see unusual laws that, that, that is in the Torah where it says that you shall not send your children to the fire. Because when an Egyptian wants a child sacrifice, guess whose child they're going to look for? The Israelites, because they are a lower class. And when someone wants your wife, what do they do? They will come and just take it and you know what? Because they are better than you. They are in a higher status than you. Nothing is going to happen to them. And the amazing thing when God gave this was this is a huge relief. They said, whoa, man, you mean no one is going to come in and steal my donkeys. No one is going to come into my house and take whatever they want. Yeah, No one is going to go into court and bear bad test false testimony. They could. If you don't give them what they want, you don't give them the wife that you have, they can, the Egyptians can go to the court and wear a false testimony. Guess what? You end up in jail because by class system, you are actually at the bottom of the food chain. These laws, as God puts it in, uh, it, it's very interesting that as much as we say, like, uh, you should not borrow false testimony and stuff, right? The only reason why there is so much chaos in this last five months is because people withhold information. How many of you have go on social media, have read so many conspiracy theories that you don't know which theory to believe? How many of you have walked through, I, I've gone like, whoa, this one is the Antichrist, then this person is the Antichrist, then what matters, this matter, life, everything matters, and in the end, you read five conspiracy theories that you end up so confused. Because somehow, when truth is not value, when people start to release fake news or, or news that is not actually kind of vetted, somehow, it, when we keep feeding ourselves with this, guess what? Even if the truth comes, nobody's going to believe this because we got so jaded. Honestly, one of the reasons why we are in so much chaos and all where this virus has gone spread out in, until... The, the point where it's worldwide is because information was withheld. Do you understand? This, this is huge. False testimony of withholding information. You know, this is, this is huge. People, like, uh, sometimes, uh, as a, uh, that's why I don't read conspiracy theory anymore. That's why I don't read, like, people send me all the time, like, oh, this is this, who is the Antichrist, whatever it is. Come on, like, you know, the more you read it, the more you get disappointed. No, you are not responsible for policing the world. Yeah, as much as you try to help the body of Christ to have some discernment, guess, guess what? If your information is not better, it's just so strange that somehow every time when I, when I, was, re, I was watching for, for some strange reason, like yesterday I was just looking at uh, some videos on, uh, uh, I, I don't know what they call it, uh, Heresy hunters, yeah? Then they talk about, 
Yeah, they, they talk about a lot, number of people we know and, st- and then they, they tell the proof, you see, like, oh, yeah, they are into this, they are into this, they are into seeing angels and they are into all the stuff, right? Actually, right, if, if you look at all the videos of people doing that, they nev- all the people that are doing that, right, never have a re- personal relationship with the person that they are actually doing the video about. Guess what? They don't dare to even. If they have a personal relationship with them and could have just asked and seek the truth before releasing the video, imagine the damage that, that has been reduced. Imagine the, the conflict that has been resolved. Somehow we just are in this culture where we either we are so jealous of what other people have or, or we cover it in the name of like helping the body of Christ at the expenses of not getting your facts checked. You can go to the YouTube, you can go to YouTube and look for all the heresy hunters and you look at them and you ask this question, how many of them actually went to the person straight and asked them honestly, what is this about? None of them. They just pick pieces and information together and then create this story where it's sensational, but it's actually causing the whole, it's actually causing masses of people to be in disillusion. It's the same way that the fake news is. It's, it, we, call, we don't know what to believe because words have the power of life and death. We, we don't know what to believe. Yeah? And it, it, it's huge. And God said this thing and said, no, you cannot bore testimony. Let the truth be truth, there was a huge belief, a relief to them because no one, I'm not going to be taken away because someone go to the, courts to, uh, uh, to the court and say that I have committed this crime which I didn't and then my sheets will be taken away, my wife will be taken away just because the other person wants it. You know what? That is a good law to have. When the Israelites see this, they are not seeing condemnation at all. They are seeing liberty. They're saying, wow, that's awesome. That no one is going to take my lot. Now, you have to understand that uh, in, in Deuteronomy, it is actually a commentary or a more in-depth summary of what this verse is about. In Deuteronomy 5.21, uh, it adds something more there. It says, You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall, not covet, uh, you shall not set your desires on your neighbor's house or land. And his uh, or land, so the word land is added there, which is interesting. It's actually knowing your the lot that you have. When you know what what coveting is, is you desiring to have another person's life and not satisfied with yours. That's the root of all of, all of these things. Coveting is just you are not satisfied with the life that God has given you, the call that God has given you, but you want to live another person's life because they look better. Do you know what? That they, at the end of the day, that is a self-esteem problem. You just don't esteem yourself better than other people. And the problem with self-esteem is only you can give yourself that esteem. That's why it's called self-esteem. Nobody can give you that. Nobody can ex- cause you to esteem what God has called you to be. Uh, only, oh, no one can give you a high esteem of what God calls you to be unless you decide yourself. And, and, and it's huge because uh, 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 the, now there, there's something deeper that is there where it says uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 14. Which is very interesting. It says there, it says, do not move your neighbor's boundary stone set up by the set up by your predecessors in the inheritance you receive from the land that the Lord God has given you to possess. Here's the thing. They were slaves. God needs to re-educate them to this point where it says, Okay, I'm gonna give you land. Land that you did not fight for, land that you did not pay for, and I'm gonna give it to you. Uh, I think my mic just went off. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Two, two. Did it went off? I don't know what happened. Can you guys hear me? Hello? One, two. Okay, good. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's on. Yeah. 
Hello? All right, good, good. Can you hear me? Yeah, as long as you guys can hear, it's all right. Uh, it's uh, just kind of like, uh, yeah, it's like land that, Justin, is there volume there? Uh, no, here, here. Okay, as long as you can, guys can hear. Like, okay, so so it's land that you knew, did not work for. It's land that is not based on your effort. It's actually based on grace. You know, it's it's grace. And and and, and so and what what this verse means is that God has allocated the boundary stones. What it means is I already set the your property, your land for you, whether you like it or not, you learn to rejoice in what God has given you. That means this is the law that God has given you. The call, the, 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 your, your, your inheritance, this is what God has given you. All you need to do is watch the boundary stones. Don't let another person push your boundaries because there are people who take the boundary stones and move. What it means is, it, it just means they are trying to enlarge their land. So they move the boundary stones a bit so that you can have more land. And that's what Deuteronomy uh, chapter 19, verse 14, it says, don't move the boundary stones because we need to understand what God has given us. Yeah? And if you don't understand what God has given you, and then when people keep coming into your land and people keep coming, in, uh, you know what? It, the best thing you can do to have proper boundaries is understand what you call to, then set the boundary around there. And it's huge. Because in uh, and, and we pray this a lot. We pray this prayer a lot, uh, which is a prayer of Jabez. I think uh, 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 many years ago there's this book about prayer of Jabez. Yeah, I think Bruce Wilkinson or something. Uh, he wrote, uh, wrote that book, and in the the prayer of Jabez is this: Jabez was honorable. Uh, this is in. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9. Jabez was honorable than his brothers. His, ma his mom and, uh, uh, had named him Jabez. And he prayed this prayer. Uh, Jabez cried out to the Lord and says, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your, my, let your hands be with me and keep me from harm, so I will be free from pain. And the Lord granted his request. It says, Lord enlarge his territory. What, what does it mean? It, you know what? You can find out what it means in First Chronicles chapter 9, verse 1. But it's because they went to exile, and when they come back, what it is is that they are coming back to this land. They will realize that the boundary stones have been moved. And what is is what your best is praying for is I want to set my boundaries more. I need to put my boundary zone back in place because you can only be what God calls you to be, and you cannot be someone else. If your eyes are keep on looking at another person's life, trying to be so jealous that you want to live another person's life, then you end up not living the life that God has given you. And that is a problem with covetousness. That's a problem with coveting is because it is really about looking at another person's life and not honoring yours. And the most beautiful thing that you can actually do tonight, right, is actually honor what God has called you to because nobody can do that. Nobody can do what God has called you to do because it is specifically, specifically for you and nobody can touch that. That is your lot. That is also the boundary stones that you, you have to place and say, this is mine. This is mine. And I want to recover what is mine. This is what Jabez is talking about. They came back and they realized that the land has been trampled on. The land has people that is not supposed to be there and he prayed this prayer and the Lord honors that. Guess what? If you understand what God has called you to and if you know that that is your Lord, then you can pray the prayer. This is not a prayer that of a greedy person. Do you understand that? The prayer of Jabez is not to pray, oh, enlarge my tent, make my business prosper. It is realizing that God has that place for you and understanding that Lord and says, Lord, now I'm going to enlarge it because this is where, this is the plot of land that you have called me to and but the stones have been moved but as you pray and it says this, the Lord answers his prayer. That means that if you pray tonight, the Lord, I want to set this place, this boundary and 
and say, this is mine. If you call me to be an evangelist to the stadium, I will say, this is my Lord. This is my Lord. And because it is my Lord and it is to the Lord that you have given me, I will honor in the name of Jesus. I will refuse to cover another person's life, be jealous of another person's life because I have my own race to run. I have my own destiny to chase and it only be, can be accomplished by me. No one can finish that race as me because Hebrews says that as we, we run the race that is set before us. We are not, it didn't say we run the race, other person's race that is set before them because you know what? Only you can make the end game. Only you can make, uh, only you can cross the finish line. You understand? This is a race that no one else can run and you not running it if there's a lane that is absent. And the body of Christ has a lane that is absent. And, 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 and the beautiful name, uh, oh, when, 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 when Israel says, the Lord our God is one, the word is Ehud. Yeah? Uh, it actually means composite. It's, it's one. It's like, uh, when we say, uh, if you guys watch soccer, uh, Liverpool play as one team tonight. What does it mean? It means that the, every single person actually played their part and it was a great game because they play as one. And that's what, the, you, uh, that's what oneness is. It's not making all of us wear the same uniform or run the same race. It, we're the, we have the same price, which is Jesus. Yeah? It's when we do our part, when we play our role in a game, when we play our role as a defender, striker, midfielder, whatever it is, when we play as one, that is unity and that the body of Christ needs you to be you so that we can play as one so that we can have one body that's why we can have one body and we have different parts as long as we start to honor ourselves we start to honor the Lord that God has given us and say it is about time that the boundary stones are set in the right place in the name of Jesus because some of you some of the boundary stones was not removed by other people some of the boundary stones were removed by you yourself because you just don't believe that it could possibly happen in your lifetime. Guess what? You move that boundary stone into a, into a smaller dream, into a smaller plot of land, but when God is wanted to give you a bigger plot, but it is about time you realize that that lot is for you and nobody can fill that place because that is rightfully yours. So it's about time. And let's pray the prayer of Jabez together. 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. For those of you who re you realize that I have been shortchanged because of what other people say, because of what other people trample on my calling, or because of what other people have stepped into, or because of me not believing it, it's because of me that I refuse to walk into it, it is time to enlarge your territory again. It is time to expand, move that boundary stone in the right place in the name of Jesus. So let's pray this prayer together. Jabez cry out to the Lord of Israel. Let's say it together. Oh Lord, that you will bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be upon me and keep me safe from harm so that I will be free from pain. And the Lord grant his request. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to address this. That the world is the way it is. And some countries are the way it is because we don't know what to believe anymore. We, there's so much news and we don't know what is true and what is real and what is fake. And a lot of it is false testimony. A lot of it, I mean, I, uh, uh, and I mean, I, I just, I mean, even yesterday I, I was like chatting with my friend and, and, uh, and the things that were said online about her, which is not true. And you know what? The world has a habit of using bad testimonies, fake testimonies, 
false witness and it leads us to this place where we are so confused and we don't know what to believe. And you, you, you know what? We wouldn't be where we are a few months down the road when some people didn't withhold information, even about the virus. It is just call and true, just call principle even to the Ten Commandments that it is about time. And the first thing that we need to understand is in order for us to be true to other people, we need to be true to ourselves. We need to be true in the law that God has given us. And we need to be true and say, I might not have the ability and the capacity to do everything that God has called me to, but because it is His word, therefore it is His law. If it is His law, therefore it is His land. All I need to do is to honor the boundary stones, that the land that God has given me. So Lord, we thank you, Lord. May we start to walk in the fullness and identity of what God has given us. And may we try not to stop, may we stop pretending to live another person's life as we start to cover what they have. Whether it's anointing, it's true. As much as you think it's sacred, whether it's anointing, whether it's a prophetic, we can learn. But the fact that you want to live their life, it's not going to happen. So we are contented. Godliness with contentment is great gain. So when we are James, godliness with contentment is great gain. So as we are contented with ourselves and realizing, whoa, this is a huge piece of land, we start to increase. We realize godliness with contentment is great gain. When contentment is set in, gain, is set in place, gain comes. What is contentment? Not lacking. Not lacking. I am happy and contented with the land that you have given me. May God bless you. May you start to understand your calling. May you start to understand the boundary stones that are set in place tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Pastor Jeff. Um, that kind of concludes, you know, um, this series on from, from Dreams to Destiny. And I encourage you, you know, at any time of time you need some encouragement, feel free to, you know, go back to the past uh, episode and feel free to catch up on those. You know, they are, they are all on our Facebook page and also on YouTube if you prefer YouTube, you know, if you want to kind of like... Uh, refresh your memory with some of the things that uh, we've been sharing all right uh, we're going into a time of ministry in just a while but right now is offering uh and tie all right so i would like to encourage you know uh, everybody who is from soccer church if you'd like to give uh, you can give through the qr code that uh, i'm gonna we're gonna put it up so all you're gonna do is you know pick up your phone you know very easy just scan a qr code and it'll open up the internet banking for those of you who are overseas you know uh, you can use the uh, PayPal that will be on the screen as well. All right, but I also like to emphasize that you know if you're uh, if Sokolbini Church is not your home church, please keep your tie to your local church. You know, but if you want to sow above and beyond what we do here, you know, through our teaching session, our preaching, and other ministry, you know, uh, we'll be really glad and honored to receive them. All right, so uh, Pastor Patrick, can I get you to you know uh, say a quick prayer for mm. for the offering tonight? Yeah. Lord, we thank you that you are the God who provides, you are the God who sees our needs. And Lord, as we give, Lord, we give knowing that, Lord, you have got us covered. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, we can never outgive you, but you always outgive us. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your grace always in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for uh, those who give. We, we, we know it's such a blessing, not just to the church, but to the kingdom of God. All right. Uh, some quick announcement uh, before we move on to ministry time. So uh, the, uh, we have one more session of our soap living room that we'll talk about cultivating a revivalist lifestyle. We've got one more session, you know, but the session after that, you know, we have a very exciting topic. I'm going to get Pastor Patrick to share. All right, so the, um, 
The next series for Soak Living Room, we are going to start this series called uh, Power and Authority. Now we've we've uh, we've we've done a series with with this with uh, with this title many many years ago. All right, uh, so we are going to do this again, and uh, we are going to add uh, a lot of new new stuff. Now Jesus says that in Matthew chapter twenty eight verse 18 that all authority has been given unto me therefore go and make disciples of all nations here's the interesting thing jesus says all authority has been given unto me therefore and he says therefore go he didn't say therefore i will go since i have the authority i will go and make disciples of all nations no he didn't say that he said all authority has has been given to me therefore you go why because he is the head we are his body and the authority that has been given unto him it flows down to us and in in this uh in this series power and authority we are going to uh, explore the authority that has been given unto us we, we we are going to go into word to see what that means and and how we can tap into the authority of God, which is already invested in in our spirit man, and 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 so we want to we want to not only just learn from the word, but we want to also activate that authority to 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 know that in Christ all things are possible. So uh, so this will will be. Uh, we'll be boot, uh, doing this in August uh, on Thursdays. Soak Living Room, 7.30. Thank you. Right. Anything else you want to add on? The boost for people to come? Like, you want to sell something special? <laughs> no? All right. Okay. All right. And uh, since, you know, today's the last uh, series on From, from Dreams to uh, Destiny, we are doing a new uh, Saturday series and uh, it's about Thriving uh, in troubled times. Th thriving in troubled times. All right, and and uh, and the heart is this: like uh, we are called to thrive and prosper in all seasons. You know, some swans say that you know he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruits in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Come on, I I got good news that no matter what season you are in, you are connected to the ultimate source of all and his name is Jesus you know and when we're connected to Jesus we know that when we're connected to him all things will align all things will fall into place all things will flow because it's rivers of living water amen so that will be the series starting next Saturday at 7 p.m. on our uh, Facebook page so you wouldn't want to miss it uh, it will be really exciting as we continue to encourage uh, the body of Christ through you know what are some ways we can thrive what are some he believes or you know just going through the bible all right so that will be next saturday 